My name is Ito Mbasi and I am the creative director for Ito Mbasi, the brand. Uh, Ito Mbasi, the brand, is a female women's wear um, brand based in Nigeria. We've been in Nigeria for the past 10 years. Our main focus is everything Nigerian. Our most recent collection called um, 27 was loosely Actually, not loosely. It was actually based on the 27 wives of Fela and Nicola Bukati. In looking back at the collection and looking at the different stages and steps and things that we did with the collection, um, I can safely say that it is, it's been one of my most enjoyable collections. The collection started life as a thought. Um, we can't claim, I can't claim that it was my thought, it was Bolan Lilson Peters. So she had called and asked if we could do a collection for her musical, um, Fela and the Kalakuta Queens. And, um, and this pushed us to areas that we didn't even, we had not even considered. So we started research on who were these queens, who were these women. Um, and it was amazing finding out that there were not just 27 wives, but there were 27 different individuals, you know, getting to know these women, getting to understand the fashion, getting to understand what influenced them, what differentiated them from the next. And, um, and that was incredibly fun. So we, as a brand, decided after we had produced the costumes, because everybody loved the costumes, we, I think we loved the costumes more than anybody else. And we decided, um, why not push it and make it a little bit more wearable for our clients? So this now morphed into a collection that we put on the runway. We went back to the beginning, which was the research. How do we make this collection more wearable so it's not just costumes for a show? How do you make it um, fashion? How do you make it fashion items? And, um, and so we went back to looking at how to streamline and to pick out pieces and areas and things that we could then turn into um, wearable pieces, wearable art, as we like to call it. The first thing we had to do was decide on what pieces we were going to do, what, what, how were we going to transition it from costumes to fashion. We had our first of several, so many different brainstorming sessions. We visited the, the colours, what colours were we going to put out there, well, how are we going to make it um, not costumey and more fashion. We looked at the colors, selected, you know, like went through the whole color, pro, um, color selection process. Um, what colors were we going to look at? What colors hadn't we done? What colors would be believable and credible? What colors would blend itself to the collection? Um, what details from the Fela and Calcutta Queens uh, musical could we actually pull out to make? to turn into, um, into this collection of these fashion pieces. Um, we thought one of the things that we found glaringly obvious, and I think glaringly obvious with hindsight, was the use of um, embroidery. Embroidery, you know, we, we've seen embroidery, everybody uses embroidery, but nobody quite does it like Fela did. And so we had incorporated that in the costumes and now decided we would make that one of the central or focal points for the collection. Um, so researching what kind of embroidery would that be? What kind of embroidery did he do? What kind of embroidery can we do now? There was also the use of um, tassels, which is more of an Ito Basi thing. And, um, and of course, you know, the, the, the 27 women used to wear their version of the tassel. So there was a lovely marriage of the, the Calcutta Queen's tassels and the Ito Basi tassels. And then we now took a bit of that and introduced it again into the collection.
Unlike most other collections and most of other things that we had done where we'd print our own, uh, where we'd customize our prints, we decided we were going to use um, Adire, we're going to use um, Ashoke, and we were also going to use fabrics that would have such intense colors. So we used um, some silk taffetas, we used um, Ashoke, we used lace, which we always do. We, of course, we had to go to different um, Ashoke merchants to see who would either wave for us or what we could buy straight off, um, off, the, off their production line. The tricky part when you're working with um, a team of more than yourself, so you have somebody else or another, two more people or four more people, however, however many there are, is that you always have to make things centered so everybody can work from the same page and everybody can have the same view of things. So a lot of the ideas that were kind of swimming in my head and in the rest of the team's heads um, had to be illustrated. So we had to go through the process of illustration. Everybody kind of did the rough sketches and that trans forms to um, more artistic illustrations, which then transforms to technical drawings. How long should it be? So you're looking at proportions, how long should it be? How short should it be? And so on and so forth. After we had done the illustrations and we'd added the colors and obviously we've selected the fabrics, um, you've created, now you've created, you have a, you, you know, like you're working from your mood board so we can see what visual impact the entire collection um, would have. Now you have to convert all of these wonderful ideas into actual outfits that people are going to wear. We need to make sure that the patterns would work on the, for the clothes and it would actually fit human beings or human forms. So um, we create a first patterns on, on the flat some of the things would, we would drape. We then turn the patterns into calicos because now you're going to sew them back together. So we go from the flat to creating a three-dimensional um, piece of clothing. How the dress appears on the dress form, which is an inanimate object, and how we would behave on a human was the fit model will be very different. So we get a fit model to come in, uh, we put the calico on them to check if it works, if they can sit, stand, you know, move, and put it on the mannequin or the dress form and check whether the proportions are right, whether the, the neckline is right, whether that is how you want the outfit to eventually look. If we are satisfied and we're happy with the, the outcome, then we can then commit to the fabric. So we transfer the pattern to the fabric. And then the wonderful process of coupling the fabric um, takes place where we get the things made up in the studio. We have the different machinists. Sometimes it's um, assembly line process and sometimes it's, you know, one person couples from the beginning to the end. And, um, and then we have our samples. So the samples we would use for our fashion shows or the samples we'd use for um, our lookbooks, but that's when we have this array of pieces that we call our collection. And it's at that point that we edit, so we take out some things that didn't quite work. And, um, and that's usually quite a brutal process because you have to be, you can't even afford to be um, emotional about it. You know, as creatives, we tend to be quite emotional and attached. And if you watch um, an outfit being made from scratch, you can, and then with us, we also name the dresses. So even at the point where it's being done, you've already, um, you've already attached yourself to this wonderful dress called, you know, Uju. And when Uju gets the chop, it, it becomes quite an emotional, um, an emotional thing. So, but unfortunately it has to be done. It's a business we run. And um, 
so yes, we do the edit and we take out things that don't work for the collection. Some pieces um, or some, some design pieces might get put on the shelf for later collections and some just never see the light of day. The, the part, the fun part that a lot of people, you know, that are not really familiar with the industry, um, the fun part they usually look forward to is always the runway. So you're going to get music lights, you know, cameras, you know, models, and it's all wonderful. Um, but before we get to the stage, you have the, you, we have to select the music. What music is going to work for this collection? When we put it on the runway, you know, what is it that people are going to see? And how do you make it resonate? Um, how do you make the music? give life to the clothes and vice versa how do you choose what models should wear how do you choose how do you choose what hairstyles so of course red hairstyles at the point where you're researching the collection you're also researching what hairstyles are we going to use to um, amplify the collection what um what makeup what what should the makeup be like um and so the the I, I, I sort of consider it an art, the art of um, the art of articulating or the art of uh, presenting the collection. And um, it's fun, but very stressful because you really just want to get it right. Because if you don't get it right, there's, um, I, I, I think sometimes you do confuse people. You know? So I'm watching 27 that you have called Fella and then the music doesn't quite resonate with the collection so it's throwing me off and I might not be able to put my finger on why I'm not getting the vibe um, so that's a, a, a quite a delicate process and you know you would a lot of the times if you want to get it right have to do it with people that understand it so some of those things we then have to rely on experts experts in those fields um, and so you, you engage people and you work with people to get it right. And that is how we came about and executed and presented our collection 27. <laughs>